Hello, 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 and good evening to you. Um, and I want to thank you for joining in today. If you're joining in for the very first time, my name is Pauline Lehman. I'm the founder of Star Riches Community Initiative, a charity whose mission is to raise aspirations for young black children and break the cycle of black people and achievement in education. I have a passion really uh, for uh, ensuring that our children are fulfilling their potential in school and in life because I believe that God has endowed them with lots of potential. Hi, Therese. Thank you for joining. Okay. Thank you very much. I know it's a bit late, but uh, I was uh, busy. So I thought, you know, I'd be free at this time. So I hope you're having a really good holiday. I've had a nice one. I've been away myself. That is why um, I couldn't do one last week with family. There was just, just no way I could steal time. Uh, but I, I'm glad I am here again today. I'm going to be talking about uh, some very useful things that you can do with your child or with your children if you have more than one during the summer holidays. I know we are uh, already three weeks into the summer holidays and we have three more weeks to go. It's never too late to catch up. Uh, these are key areas of development that I believe, uh, you know, we should support our children with for the rest of the holidays. So during the holidays, a lot of parents do tend to so sometimes struggle to find out things to keep their children occupied. Uh, so the kids end up, you know, in front of TV, the TV for the whole day or, you know, end up going out for the whole day or playing video games or associating with the wrong group of people. When children have time in their hands and the time is not uh, put in purposeful use, then it's always possible for those sort of things to happen. So we're going to be talking about five key areas. And these are really important because as we all, as you knew and I know, a, a child's um, uh, 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 development or a child's potential to succeed in life does not just depend on them doing really well in school. Doing well in school is one, but also it's about empowering children with life skills, you know, social skills, uh, the right mental capacity, uh, skill sets and mindsets to be able to, you know, face challenges, to become resilient, to be able to keep going. So those are the sort of things we're going to be talking about today. Now, the first area for development is your child's mental development. Now, very interestingly, research shows that during the summer holidays, uh, children experience what is called summer learning loss. It's where children in, in places like America or other parts of Africa, where they have three months of you know, school holidays in summer, children tend to go back you know, in their learning, they forget the things they've learned, they lose the study skills, they lose the motivation to study. Uh, and so when they go back in September, it takes them a long time to develop that motivation again, to become interested in schoolwork. Some of them actually struggle to focus in the classroom. And that is why I think it is important to ensure that, you know, we keep our children uh, continuously connecting with their schoolwork. So we need to ensure that this summer learning loss does not affect our children. So what are the things you can do with your child to engage them mentally? Uh, we could brush up on the content from last year. You know where they are based on the results they got. Hello, Bibi. Thank you for joining. So based on the results your child got at the end of the the, the last academic year, you can focus on those areas. It could be English, it could be maths, it could be history. You can focus on those areas and get them to work on those areas. Because as your child goes to the next class in September, they're going to build on the concepts they learned last year. So you don't want your child going to the next class without actually um, polishing up on the things that they did last year. So that is the first thing we could do. If your child is fine it, all across the board, then encourage them to study ahead. It's really a really good practice. I encourage my children to study the content for the next class during the summer holidays. Now, that is powerful in helping 
children, especially if you think your child is not very sharp and is not a very fast learner, by getting them to learn ahead, you are you are kind of helping them, putting them in a position where when they go to the classroom and a teacher teaches them the content, they will understand it a lot easier. So that is one of the strategies for high achieving children. So if you want your child to be high achieving, this is the time to get them working. Now, some parents will say, oh, they've worked so hard during the nine months. Why should we put that pressure on them again? Yes, you have the choice to put the pressure on them or not to put the pressure on them. But I think it is not fair on your child's mental capacity to let them get the, you know, their whole waking hours. If it's 14 hours during the day, every day, sitting down in front of the TV, doing things that are not productive. I think you, if you can carve out one hour or two hours here and there is going to go a long way to ensure that they don't waste time during the holidays doing things that do not really count for their future. The other thing is reading uh, outside the scope of your child's schoolwork. Okay, so they could read extensively, you know, or read widely, encourage them to read fiction, non fiction books, knowledge books. You know, reading is amazing. It is one of the most important, you know, criteria to help that determines, you know, a child's educational outcomes or academic outcomes. So a child will read. Someone says readers are leaders. Children need to read every day, depending on the age. You could read from between 10 minutes to 30 minutes and children who are actually passionate about reading could spend hours reading. So it is really useful to ensure that your child is reading. It expands their mindset. It expands them, takes them, you know, into experiences that they wouldn't have had had they not read the book. So encourage them to read, encourage them to watch documentaries, the lots on YouTube and on TV, you know, educational videos. You, you can, they can also learn experientially by visiting museums, visiting castles, the things they've learned about during the school year. You could actually visit some of those places so they can see it live. Children learn and remember things more when they can actually see it. You know, it connects more and it stays more. So research shows that, you know, seeing things, you know, uh, has a capacity to, you know, when you see things, it cap captures that information and keeps it in our subconscious. So that is one good thing you could do. So that is the first area of development for your child these holidays. The second is your child's spiritual development. Uh, spiritual development, I'm talking about connectivity with the creator. It's so important. Studies are showing, approving more and more that when people have a spiritual connection, they tend to be happier. They tend to enjoy more well, you know, better, a better lifestyle, you know, uh, and the, the general good health. So I didn't say that, you know, research shows that. So encourage, you know, the children have a lot of time in their hands. So carve out time for them to read their Bible, for them to, you know, pray, for them to watch, uh, you know, things to do with your faith, movies or documentaries about the faith, just so that they are grounded in the things, you know, that are really useful. If you are somebody who is spiritual, who has a faith, you know, I have a faith, I'm a Christian. And so, you know, I will focus on the things pertaining to my faith. So that is it. So help them to, you know, read extensive Christian literature, to fast and just to do Christian, you know, spiritual activity. That is really important. The third Thing you need to help your child to do during the holidays is their physical development. The physical development of a child is so, so important. Get them to exercise. You know, studies show in our day and age, more and more children becoming obese because they sit down watching TV. They are in their bedrooms on their personal devices or they are playing mob games, you know, on the phones or on computer or on the TV, you know, and they are not moving a lot. So children going through this phase are picking on, eating, snacking, and by the end of the summer holidays, you know, they would likely have put on some more pounds. So we want our children to exercise, to become stronger, to become healthy, to become happier. Uh, studies show that when we exercise, Hormones called endorphins are release happy hormones. They call, they reduce stress, imp improve mood for our teenagers. I encourage my children to, you know, go out. We go out for 
walks, we go out running to the gym, doing different activities together. So I encourage you, if your kids are not uh, interested, you could set it out as a family activity. But it's important that they go out, they get some fresh air, and they get some physical activity done. That will help them to take a break from the phones, to take a break from technology, and mm -hmm. focus their attention and their energy on something else. Hi, Sheila, and blessing. Thank you for joining us today. Hope you're all doing well. So, we could walk, we could do team sports. You can encourage them to go out and, you know, do team sports within the community. There are lots of things that, you know, the council has in place for children to actually do during the summer holidays. So find out from the library. The library is a good place to find out about this information. Uh, if you also go on to uh, Google and type out family days out um, activities for families, you know, in your city, it, a long list will come up. There's so much that you could do in terms of physical activity with your children. The fourth is personal development. Now, for a lot of people, uh, personal development is something they've come across um, from as adults. Yes, yeah? so personal development is for many people is something people go through as adults, but we can start to inculcate those, you know, success philosophies, those success ideologies, even within the minds of our children. So what is personal development? Personal development is simply anything that a person can do to make their lives better. So to, or to add value to their lives. So for example, if you have a problem with communication, with, you know, or social skills, you lack social skills, you could actually, um, you know, uh, go on to Google, go on to YouTube, I find out seminars, find out webinars, find out trainings, read books about how you can become a better communicator. So these things work. I am a product of personal development. I used it and I'm still using it. I never stop learning. I always say that I am learning every day. Uh, Albert Einstein says anybody who stops learning is old, even if you are 18 or 20, something like that. So we never stop learning. It's important to help our children identify the areas in their lives that they need to work on to, and to help them develop those areas. It could be uh, learning a new habit. It could be just breaking a bad habit. And remember, science shows that anything that someone does for 21 days become a habit. So we've got three weeks, about three weeks to the... At start of the new school year, you can get your child to develop any new habit. It could be making their bed in the morning. It could be reading. You know, you could set them targets for anything. You know your child best. So you need to uh, set those targets, you know, for your child. It's about learning new skills, learning hobbies. It's about developing talents. So you, you could have noticed a talent in your child and you say, okay, for the next three weeks, this is what we're going to do. You're going to spend maybe 10 to 20 minutes every day watching a video or practicing your piano or doing something like that. And that, believe you me, will go a long way to help your child nurture uh, and grow that gift, that talent and that hobby. And who knows where that gift or that talent will take them in future. For a lot of people, you know, who have become very successful, it's as a result of developing gifts, developing talent. So let's encourage them. It could be learning how to cook. It could be hairdressing. I encourage the, you know, the, uh, teenage girls to learn it. It's something that would give you a bit of pocket money here and there. It could be artistic work, painting. It could be taking pictures, you know. So for some people, photography is a hobby. You know, start to take pictures, start to, you know, you know, uh, uh, design flyers and that kind of thing. There's just so much that children can do that it's a shame for us to let them um, sit down in front of the TV instead of making good use of that time during the holidays. Also, it's important to leave unstructured time for the children. So you set up a schedule for your child. It's really useful for the holiday to say, this is how your day would be. These are the things that, you know, um, I would expect you to do. And even you could discuss it, with, discuss it with them. You could get them to write a list of things they want to do because we can't expect children 
are children. They are not adults. They need to be helped. They need to be supported. They need to be taught. So if you if a child gets up in the morning, you don't tell them to do something, they won't do it. So create this structure, you know, put it, set it out as a schedule, stick it on the fridge so that they can actually see what they can do. These are the range of things I can do. So I don't have to sit down in front of the TV. I don't have to sit down in front of a video game. I don't have to sit down on my phone all day. And I would encourage you limit usage of those phones as well. It's something that I do during holidays. We limit the usage of phones because if you leave it there, they'll be on, on it forever. So that is about personal development. And finally, number five, a child's recreational development, it helps to expand a child's range of experiences. One of the problems or the challenges within our community is that our children are not exposed to a variety or a range of experiences and it makes them to have, it, it limits their experiences, it limits the, the things they can talk about when they are with their friends. So let's expose them to things that they can do for fun. You know, days out to the museum, trips to the, the, the beach, you know, trips to places of science or historical, you know, interest and that kind of thing so that they are learning and they are seeing the things that they've learned. And that way, their range of experiences, you know, widen. So they need to uh, get involved in recreation, in different forms of recreation. You could involve them in house chores, doing chores together. Fishing together, if it's it's your kind of thing, doing adventures with your children, teamwork, problem solving activities, playing board games together, just doing things mm -hmm. that will help build that bond. The sort of things that when school is in session, you don't really have the time to do. But this is a time for, for you to be able to bond with your child, to talk with your child and to ensure that we are children have a broad range of experiences. So, thank you, Uwa, for joining today. I was talking or have been talking about five key areas of development to focus on during the school holidays because children have a lot of time in their hands and so we can't let them, you know, sit down watching the TV. That is just numbing their brain, numbing their, me numbing their mental capacity. So I mentioned five areas. I'm going to summarize them as we round up. The first one is your child's mental development. Uh, research shows that children experience learning loss. So they forget the things they've learned. Um, they lose interest, focus, and motivation. So I did mention the things we can do. So you could go back and watch from the first, you know, from the start. Secondly, a child's spiritual development, ensuring that your child has a lot of time in their hands that they invest time also in develop, developing their spirituality, their connection with God. The child's physical development, they need to be exercising, they need to go out and, and run and play and take some fresh air, which is really good for the brain. So they can't sit down. It's not allowed. You won't allow them. I believe that we are all parents that are raising leaders here. We won't let them watch TV all day. That is very unproductive. So that's the third one. Fourth one is the personal development. Uh, and it's about helping your child become a better version of, the, of themselves. Identifying the areas of development and working with them, setting up targets during, you know, either daily targets, weekly targets, two weekly targets, and so on to help them, you know, become a better version of themselves. And finally, recreational development, which helps to expose your child to a range of experiences so that they become knowledgeable. They can talk about lots of things when they go back to school with their friends without feeling as, oh, those had fun, we didn't have fun kind of thing, if you get what I mean. So those are the five areas we've covered today. Thank you very much again for joining. Um, if you feel you like the video uh, or this session, it was useful, please share. Uh, if you have not liked our Facebook page, please like our Facebook page. And until next week, have a lovely weekend. God bless you. Bye-bye.